Warren. Let's try that again. Howdy. Howdy. There we go. Hi, I'm Braxton Dolce. I'm from Kerrville, Texas, just north of San Antonio. I have a little equestrian center there. And I grew up working horses from the ripe old age of seven. I was very one of the lucky few that, that had somebody that supported me, and that was my grandmother. Uh, thank you. Um, she gave me my first horse when I was seven. And I started out showing. And I found my way into the Arabian show world because I was riding a little pony of America, a little POA. And he threw me off every time I got on it. They like to say I learned to ride falling off. <laughs> and uh, the pe person that was helping me said, I really, really, really want to give this kid a good chance. Can we just put him on one of ours? My mom said, sure, that'd be great. So they put me on an Arab, and I fell in love with the Arab. His name was Aardvark. And uh, Aardvark packed me around, just great. And we transferred to another horse named Lyra. Entered the uh, Arabian show world, and I did Western pleasure, stock seat equitation, English pleasure riding saddle seat, saddle seat equitation. But I found my way to Arabian native costume. It's where we dress up in Arabian habit. And we have three speeds, walk, canter, and hand gallop. And I loved going fast. So it was, it was a blast. I had a good time. I spent many years doing that. Did some driving, and um, I had a lot, had just a really wonderful, well-rounded background in the pleasure world. Uh, but then in about 1986, I found my way, we, we moved full-time to Kerrville, and I found a trainer named Jimmy Reno, and he was doing cutting horses. And all of a sudden, the Arabian world decided we want to do Arabian cutting. Everybody thought this was crazy. No Arab could cut, yeah, but we could. And um, I was lucky to be with a great group of people that started, went in to work the Arabian cutting horses. And um, at, toward the end of it, uh, before I went off to college in 1992, we went double national champion and world champion on my old horse, Jim. He's 30 years old this year. So um, we hope he hangs on until I can get home. He's having a little hard time right now. So a little prayer for Jim. Um, but in the middle of all that, I found out that college was not my thing. I did not enjoy being, being in the classroom all the time. I like to be outside. At Texas A&M, they call it the other education, everything outside the classroom. I saw a sticker on a window out there, so I'm just going to say, whoop. Anybody going to claim it? Okay, there you go. Um, good stuff. Um, and I went from A&M to Texas Tech. I followed my, uh, my, my teacher at A&M to Texas Tech, and we went through the, the horse classes. I got straight A's in my horse classes. I wasn't getting A's at all in my other classes. Um, God said, you're going to work horses. This is what you're going to do. So in 2002, I quit my college career. I went to work um, at my own horse barn teaching lessons. I trained a few horses. But I knew I had a, had a big piece missing. There were a lot of things that weren't working for me. And um, short story, I found Anna Twenty in California. And I followed her ever since then. It's been almost four, 12 years, 13 years now. Yes, yeah. yes, about that. Seems like it's only been about five minutes underwater. <laughs> so anyway, um, I've been blessed um, that she's put up with me as long as she has. I've been blessed to have a wonderful team to work with. Uh, we truly are a team. We work together. We have a good time. We go through ups and downs together. Some of you are sitting out there. I see you. Um, and, and it's a very exciting place to be. I'm glad you're here to see what we're going to do today. Uh, we, have, we have a great thing with these wonderful horses. Um, I'm going to personally thank Jody and Katie and all the folks here at Zoomers for letting us do this. Uh, my high note right now is of January 2013. I am a certified instructor with Reach Out to Horses. And, um, I, and I was grandfathered in because I started so long ago that Anna hadn't come up with a trainer's program yet. And she said, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. And I said, yeah, but everybody else has to. Why don't I? So that's why I'm here, because I want to go ahead and do everything that everybody else has to do um, so that we can all be certified and do the things that we do together. So it's part of the team. So um, welcome. Glad you're all here. And um, turn it over to Liv. Hi, I'm Lorraine Campbell. I'm from Scotland originally, now living in Longmont, Colorado. I grew up in a traditional English riding background, the stable brat, you know, mucking out, <laughs> and to get on a horse, didn't care if it bucked you off, just as long as you could sit on it. And uh, did a lot of traveling, and in the year 2000, I find myself living in Colorado and something gives me an Arabian x race horse recently gelded, kind of crazy guy. And so I had to learn some different methods quickly because otherwise you know, I was going to get killed and uh, so I got into natural horsemanship. So that was the start of this journey 
And then last year, it was never quite exactly, I hadn't quite found my um, method, but last year I met Anna Twinney and I got into, did the holistic horsemanship course. And then I got hooked and I thought, okay, I'm just going to do them all. So I've done three clinics this year and this is the culmination. And I've spent most of the year doing case studies. So working at rescues, working at Zumas, working other rescues, working with remedial horses, working with the untouched. I've had the opportunity to work with the tribal horses, which has been just a huge learning experience for me. And uh, I hope to go on and do more of the same. I'm not quite sure where this journey is going to take me, but I know it's going to involve horses and I know it's going to involve broth methods. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone, um, Rebecca Hoppy, as you've heard, British but living in Nigeria of all places. So, um, you know, not only has Anna and the Roth team fulfilled a dream for me to stand here before you today, I've kind of helped a little bit with a, a dream for Anna and Roth and take the methods over to Africa, which is, as you can imagine, quite a quite a far stretch. So, you know, be careful what you wish for when you think you want things to show up. But um, I remain convinced there's going to be a day where we get her off to Africa and I'm building the confidence, the contacts and the, and the uh, situational um, basis there to, to be able to facilitate that, so that would be quite an achievement. So what do I do in Nigeria? Well, um, I'm locked in on a camp, it's a dangerous place where I live, so I said, well, if I can't get out to help horses, I'm going to bring horses to me. So I have basically set up my own rescue over there, which has been a learning curve like this. I mean, I'm out on a limb, there aren't the qualified people around. I mean, the, the polo clubs there is mainly what the horse tradition is. It's a legacy from the colonial days, and they are seriously, seriously abusive. I've yet to find an establishment that understands that horses are not machines. So, um, it's, been, it's been a hell of an experience and it's been, it's been one amazing journey and the only thing that's really allowed me to inspire me, give me the confidence, the skill set and also the support despite being so far away has been, has been the Roth team. Um, I do not feel isolated just being where I am at all. So, you know, if you have that dream, it, it can be fulfilled and people show up to help you every step of the way. And that has been one of the most amazing things about Roth, it's been the teamwork going on. You're never, ever alone. There's always somebody there to help you, which has been incredible. So that, that's the Africa piece. Um, what also did I want to say to you? Yeah, why did I choose Roth? You know, there's a lot of natural horsemanship out there. There's a lot of people you can go to. And I looked around carefully in my pursuit of natural horsemanship, and it really is the Roth methods that spoke to me mostly for a number of reasons. One, the holistic approach. And Anna mentioned it in her opening um, introduction to you guys. She's not afraid to take her team to places where other people might be a little bit afraid to go. The telepathy, the energy, the authenticity. When you peel back the layers of Roth, it's the same through and through, right to the core. It's not some DVD, it's not a book, it's not some TV show or podcast. It's the same through and through and through. And everybody sitting here is the same on any given day at any given time and that was one of the most important things that spoke to me, the authenticity of that. And the fact that we come to rescues, the fact that we are given a chance to give back, working with horses at rescues to me can be some of the most challenging environments, establishments and horses that you can come across. I know from my own situation, the 17 that I have, um, you know, have come from extremely bad backgrounds. They are walking dead, you know, and you're bringing that back from the brink. They've been abused, they've been rehabilitated, I've got foals, I've had untouched, I've had very angry horses right through to horses that are shut down. So that's the rescue environment, and that, that speaks to me a lot. And not only rescuing, I like to go away and try and plant the seeds and educate people um, of, of how you can actually form a connection with horses. And, you know, this is Africa, you have quite a number of poor people, you know, why, why save the horses? But what I've found is that horses often save people. And Roth brings that out too. We don't only go out and help, help uh, the horses and get them to where they need to be. I've found along the journey, and I can see myself in that. I'm ex-military. I came with not even knowing how to hug someone. I was so black and white, you know. My journey has been incredible to be able to sort of stand and 
give people hugs and <laughs> find my emotions. It's been, you know, it's, it's been a very big personal journey for me, and that's what Roth also gives to people. It helps people find themselves. So there's a huge, a huge, uh, you know, um, envelope with far-reaching ripples that Roth has. Um, so I really hope you enjoy today. Thank you very much for allowing us to be able to give this to you. Good morning. My name is Seya Tillanen. I rode motorcycles for 30 years, <laughs> and then eight years ago I got back to horses and been riding horses since. And now I want to help them to sing. And the reason why I'm saying that is my father brought me this piece of jewelry, which is a figure of a singing horse, and it's originated to the area where he was born, to Ingrid people, which is an area that used to belong to Finland and now is part of Russia. And the old legend with this kind of figure says, a singing horse is a happy horse, it's hard working, but with a good attitude. And that's where I want to be. So I've been with Anna for three years now, and it surely changed me. I know that hawking piece, I didn't used to, and now I'm all over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Reiki master, so I do Reiki for horses. I've done that at the J-Bob 4 Ranch at Watkins, and some rescues, and also overseas in Finland. I do uh, exercise sessions, I do problem solving. I'm building my own business called Singing Horse Services, and I would love to help your horse to sing. Thank you. <laughs>